Or else I'm gonna get to swing it. You got one more f***ing chance of nuts. <laughs> you know what? I really don't even know how to start this video. I mean, first, I'm just gonna start off by saying, if you haven't seen it, there will be spoilers. But I'll start by saying that I watched the first season of Vinland, I think my first year in college, or like last year of high school or something. So it's been like three, four years. And what I will say about season one, completely different feel from this season. And the way I viewed season one after finishing that last episode, which was fucking ridiculous, I was like, that was a really good show. And I see the potential but I wasn't blown away. I also think I was still in a stage of life where I couldn't appreciate the type of story that was being told to me. But I will say with this season, I could appreciate the story that was being told to me. But I think the cast of characters that was introduced this season felt very meaningful. You know, because when we're first introduced to Einar, Thorfinn is nowhere to be seen. And I like the way that they started that. We see Einar just living life and then his town gets like ransacked and taken over by these barbarians. Mother gets shot in the back with an arrow. She starts to die. And then him and his sister are fending off for themselves. And Einar gets sent to the combine for the VSA draft, the Vinland Slavery Association. And with his build, I mean, he could be a number one pick. And he's really got all the attributes to be a good addition to whatever you got going on, whatever farm, whatever, whatever you need need him for the foreshadowing with this show man just for the first episode alone like looking at leaf here talking straight to einer's face and like not even knowing that they're gonna all be involved with each other later on down the line and then looking at kettle pull up drafting einer to this farm beautiful piece of land and then meeting thorfinn at the end of that first episode seeing how he's just grown out his hair he has a little stubble and he's just completely mute einer pulls up to the farm trying to be cordial with thorfinn because you know he's he seems like a tough cookie to crack and then while him and thorfinn are cutting down the trees waiting for lunch to seeing their higher ups pull up einer's sitting here thinking he's getting supper but instead he's getting scraps smiling all jolly and shit it's like <laughs> the, the nigga's just like Damn, look at that stupid ass face. <laughs> What's that? Your lunch. This shit's for the both of us? Listen, wiener, let me break it down for you. You're lucky that you're even eating at all. Because us free men busted our ass coming all this way to give you food. So you're going to tell me thank you right now or I'm going to tell the headmaster. We'll take the food. Arigato. Have a wonderful day, gentlemen. And then we started to see like all the farm life, cutting down the trees and doing all that. Einer meets the love of his life, maybe. And we're meeting like the farm head guy. And then we meet his son and then we see him getting a little freaky with this chick. And there are also the different dudes that were roaming around the farm that kind of keep, they're kind of like the security. I guess episode three was kind of when this story started to somewhat progress in terms of just seeing how Thorfinn's character has like developed over the years and where he's at mentally because he's having these nice Nightmares. And right after Einar sees Thorfinn damn near traumatized, he sees Arnheim Dern Golden Hour looking as luscious as ever, so he has to start spitting game. Trying to make some shit work, and I thought he had it in the bag. I really did. I thought he was making good progress here. I could have watched Thorfinn and Einar farm for the whole 24 episodes. Not even joking. It was so beautiful to me. I don't know, but we see them pull up with the farm head niggas, and they're trying to influence the master's son to kind of slice one of them in half. Y'all boys are gonna die for us. Nigga, fuck what we done to deserve this! Not one thing, but you don't even own your own lives. Looking at Einar hit this defensive tackle on the dude, trying to protect Thorfinn, telling him to go. It is such good development. It's barely even gotten to the point where Thorfinn is really spitting game and like going bonkers verbally. Like the way his hair is like kind of messy, but not listening in his eyes. He's got those hazelnut eyes and he just talks monotone. He could cut me down. He might be one of us. I'm talking about the light skins. He's getting cut left, right, square, center, not even blinking. And he's speaking a whole soliloquy and he's not even paying this shit any mind. Like this nigga just got half of his ear cut off and the scene was so cold with his hair and the blood splattering and him still not even looking up. He doesn't even know what this nigga looks like barely. He's literally winning this battle without even moving a muscle. Now granted, he may have gotten his head cut off if Snake didn't pull up, which is another character that I really appreciated as the season progressed. And that scene was a top three scene of the whole season. No doubt. Just the pure despair and loss that you see in Thorfinn's eyes and just how in his mental state where he deadass does not care anymore. And this man Snake can, can see this potential in Thorfinn and he can see that he's sort of that nigga. He pulls up with his sword and everything. He's about to attack him and Thorfinn's animalistic instincts kick in back to when he was with Asuka a lot and hits this nigga with a nice little Chun-Li two-piece kick combo. And he did that just to prove a point that Thorfinn still has somewhat of a will to live. 
and I'm noticing it now. See, I don't notice these things the first fucking walkthrough, dog. This nigga Fox had no intention to kill Thorfinn. So when he was charging up that last attack, he may have just cut his bangs off or something. Because Snake was swinging that sword with the intent to kill. That's why he got a little flashback to Askeladd and actually reacted because he could see that there was some strength there and there was intent there. But then Einar learns that Thorfinn's, I think it was like Thorfinn's people. It was the same group of Danish people or the same nationality, whatever that killed his mom's sister and destroyed his village. And then Einar develops this hatred for the dude, attempts to murder him in his slumber. But it's like little moments, as I was just saying, little moments like this. Thorfinn's having a nightmare. Einar resists, he's like, I can't. Wakes Thorfinn up from his nightmare. Thorfinn's giving him the whole rundown of what happened back when he was an assassin. This scene alone, can you could already start to see Thorfinn's development. He's not necessarily a non-confrontational person, but he's not gonna start conflict intentionally. But he's somewhat just like a depressed, sad farmer right now. So then Einar is giving him a whole lecture, screaming at the man, talking about, do you wanna be here? I don't know what the fuck you went through, but don't act so fucking spoiled. Cause both of us are here. We can sit, we can eat, we can sleep. It may not be the best situation, but we've got to work with what we got. And then seeing Einar turn around, walk across the room, and hearing Thorfinn in the background say, thank you, Einar, for waking me up. Me watching this scene four years ago, I'm not being brought to tears by that. And I wasn't brought to tears by this specifically, but it's like a moment like that, just seeing maturation and seeing growth in an individual when you're like looking at their life story even if it's animated and it's all fake fiction whatever it is it's just a different feeling and i could sort of understand the mental dilemma that Thorfinn's having but the dilemma that Einar's also having as well in talking about development nigga canute oh my gosh we see canute and where he's at and like we're seeing all this occur firsthand because we remember canute being a bitch now i'm not even gonna say a bitch he was just a really nice guy but not a guy that was fit to rule and we just see where he's at how he starts to collaborate with the joms vikings and minecraft looking dude and after that i don't know what the fuck happened but canute just became a fucking menace man oh my goodness he's he's negotiating with this dude about leaving mercia and to withdraw his troops from the area because i guess he's trying to conquer some land at the time i don't remember specifically the dude's like i'm offering you eight thousand pounds so can you just leave and withdraw your troops listen do you hear yourself really like just take a step back collect your thoughts do you hear yourself you're telling me to take this money and leave my own territory you're basically attempting to insult me and then we see him give the nigga an ultimatum he's basically telling him to betray the current king and follow him guy says no he's like all right y'all boys hey floki this nigga's really got some balls goes outside he's setting up some fire beacons to the sky this is what it means to go to war against me Imagine it, Mercia just being reduced to ash, and I'll happily be the one to set this place ablaze. And obviously the dude folded, cuts the narrator talking about next year, April of 1016, King Ethel of England would die, gets that nigga handled. After that, his older brother takes the throne. Seven months later, nigga also dies. <laughs> this man was on a fucking mission. Canute's a bad man. He is a top tier anime villain. This nigga plays to get what he wants, if he wants his dad dead, see ya. Good night. Brother takes the throne, gone. Where is he at? At the same time, getting Thorfinn just getting more, not necessarily emotional, but more vocal with Einar, and then you could see their friendship blossoming. It's he just two brothers come up together and they meet like the old headmaster and everything and they start to develop a relationship with him and like time really starts passing by after that thorfinn and him are starting to grow some facial hair and they're both looking real clean i really like the goatees on both of them and thorfinn having his hair tied back like that and i don't remember how long in the future this was but einer is still trying to spit game to arnheid it's not working out just yet because i guess she's a mistress to the master and i don't remember if she's pregnant yet but she eventually gets pregnant with his child and then we see like just einer teaching thorfinn these scenes about farming in general were some of my favorite in the whole season. Just Thorfinn looking at and admiring just the grass growing, the insects on it, and just asking questions and actually taking interest in what's going on. We meet the master's other kid, Thorgil, and he seems like he's a fucking threat. And I think episode eight is really where it took off for me personally. This is where you start to see conflict. It was a different type of conflict. They pull up to their wheat crops and they see that the ops have attacked and Einar's sitting here in disbelief. He's a real deal farmer. Like he's an OG, this is what he was born to do type of deal. So he takes this shit seriously. Like this is his sport. If he wasn't a slave, he would get paid to do this shit and he would be making millions. Thorfinn, you really don't get it. Wheat is a type of root to where if the wind blows it down, it gets back up on its own. 
So whoever did this, they knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. And it seems like over time, we're starting to see Einar become more of the confrontational person. Einar, you can't go if slaves attack free men. Who knows what will happen? They're dead to me. He's violent. Picking up Thorfinn by his huh? neck. Thorfinn, you have to be angry. They destroyed our wheat. This was intentional. And see, I'm going to bring it up now. And I didn't bring it up earlier because this is the type of nigga Thorfinn started to become. I'm going to take a page out of CJ the Champ's book. Shout out to him. As he has a black Air Force round table. I'm going to have the light skin lounge. And Thorfinn may have to be the first invite. The words that come out of this nigga's mouth are poetry every single time. It is just beautiful. He says, if you want to kill the retainers, then I deserve to die by your hand a hundred times more. The flow of his words, Edgar Allan Poe has nothing on this nigga. You could see just his his development has like skyrocketed. And Einar is sitting here gritting his teeth down to the fucking nub. And they call up Patry and he seems like a cool dude. It's just like he only ha he can only do so much for them because he could see the work that they put in. And seeing these wheat vandalizers walk over the horizon while Einar is sitting here clenching his fist down in the dumps looking at the floor thinking of Arnhide and how she's given up on ever being free again Thorfinn sitting next to him knowing what's about to pop off and Einar walks up to them wanting a problem hey y'all boys are the ones who ravaged our farm correct farm I don't have any idea what you're talking about uh, I I'm really sorry to hear that but don't let that shit get you down though because word on the street is that shit was tarnished anyway it was grown by slaves and this Welcome. gave me like goosebump inducing moments, nigga. I don't. <laughs> I'm actually glad that Thorfinn just clocked this nigga with the left because Einer pulled back the right. It, it was not gonna be one. <laughs> It was not gonna be one. He had some range too, but I mean, Thorfinn throws a mean punch to left or right handed, it doesn't even matter. All of his front teeth are gone. And it is such an impactful scene because Thorfinn is not really getting physical like that anymore. And he's kind of trembling because he, he just let himself get angry for a second. <laughs> he actually has this nigga's eyeballs bulging out of his head and broke his jaw. Einer's here taking on like a three on one and Thorfinn's having like some sort of nightmarish dream roaming through the shadow realm. This was such a touching moment for me, man, where we see Askeladd chilling on top of this pillar and apparently he's in Valhalla, which is like the hell for Vikings or where they could fight forever. And just the atmosphere is really gruesome. Like we see Bjorn or whatever his name is, who was, who was on Askeladd's crew that I think died a little bit earlier in season one. Dude's lost himself and he's going fucking berserk. It's just the visuals that they were also putting on display and the gore and violence like the shit was just so intense and so like it's not it wasn't real but it just felt very like i guess organic like they really tried on this valhalla scene like this is probably the cleanest animation or at least one of the nicest animated scenes in the whole season and then we see thorfinn's dagger falling from the sky giving us more story depth than season three of demon slayer that was i was hating okay that was a hateful comment but that was just a post i saw on twitter i promise that's not my own joke just the dialogue he's having with Askeladd. And Askeladd is just like, Askeladd might be the best character in the show. How he's a father figure to Thorfinn, but not at the same time. And he's just giving him the rundown. Being very philosophical and just very beautiful with the shit he's spitting this Thorfinn right now. And he's like, why are you kicking them? That's so cool. Those are all the people you killed. How about you hear them out a bit? And we see this nigga Thorfinn has a mountain load of fucking kills. This man's caught so many bodies, he can make another one of those pillars like three times over. And it's like, you really like have to just think and grasp that for a second that this man is a mass murderer. He is a terrorist, like he, he used to be. And it is such a powerful fucking scene seeing Askeladd jump down after Thorfinn is sitting here bawling his eyes out, apologizing nigga. Like just seeing him cry for the first time almost had me in tears. And this is the second time this season where I've almost been brought to tears just because of the emotional impact of the shit that's been going on. And he's telling him that this is your battle. You got to climb up and fix yourself because this is not you. You don't have time to cry. Take the people you killed with you and climb up, even if they're still grabbing. Become a true warrior because this is your battle. Like this man, Askeladd is multitasking with this shit. Giving a motivational speech while beating these dudes down in this seat. Like, oh my, this shit was so good. I'm watching it right now. Damn. And it's like the seamless transitions of Thorfinn, he starts screaming, clawing his way out of the depths, and then he throws his hand up and then it transitions back to real time. And then we see that Einar's gotten his ass beat and the dude retreated. And then we see Thorfinn crying again, talking about how he's used his hands to kill so many people and says that he's now going to become reborn and become the person he truly wants to be. I guess at this point, they've been together for three years. So then we just see their brotherhood and their friendship really like come to fruition. Like after that last episode, 
everything really was put into full effect when it came to their relationship. And they're getting really close to being able to buy their freedom. And we see this cold ass bitch Canute pull back up to his brother's residence as he's on his deathbed after he poisoned him. You don't do that. Like it could really show you cannot trust anyone and how cold the world can be. Like so many ideas and themes are like thrown at you throughout this whole season while Canute's putting on this fake ass front talking to his brother as he's dying talking about get well soon so we can play ball again. Y'all are not playing ball again. And again, I, I really love the focus on like multiple characters because we see Canute's little thing going on. We see Kettle, how he went back to where he initially bought Einar. He's with Leaf now and he's still on the hunt for Thorfinn. And when we see him get into the dialogue with Kettle, I'm getting so excited because he's trying to see Thorfinn gets the green light on being able to go to his farm with him when we see Thorgill and Kettle and I forgot the I think it's Almar trying to negotiate with the king trying to get Almar to serve as like a guard alongside Thorgill it's like he got none of the good genes I don't know what happened the Punnett square didn't work out properly I don't know he got all the recessive genes and see this is Canute's like third offense of just being an absolute demon because he has this whole thing going on with Kettle talking about how he's gonna like negotiate with him and like he'll send him products or whatever in exchange for not like taking over his farm and then he goes to his quarters and he's like we're gonna take over his farm that's actually first order of business we're taking over his farm and i will say that thorgo even though omar is like a weakling he is a good brother to him because he really like pushes this idea that like omar can become a warrior and i don't know who did it but when omar was embarrassed in front of everyone and had to prove his manliness in front of the crowd and then he starts charging him he's on his way to definitely pass away right now because he's not even using any technique. Thorgel is rooting for him though. I'm pretty sure it's one of Canute's dude who flicked the coin with precise accuracy into the nigga's eye. Like watching that scene alone, this is when we really see that Thorgel is that like, you want him on your side. He may rival Thorkel. When we see Omar get his first kill and Thorgel being like, hey yo little bro, good job. I got the rest because their friends are about to jump the nigga now. Thorgel smiles like he's been waiting for this moment all day. He's been waiting for this shit since he woke up this morning. He like his sword strikes are so strong, he's he slicing through skeletons. His family's getting arrested. Like he is really a real one for his family. He will never fucking like bend on him. Hand over that sword and put your hands behind your back. Are you deaf, nigga? Decapitation. Gets charged at, and then instead of just jabbing him in his stomach, he just slices off all of his fingers. Catches the dude's sword midair. Decapitation. Don't think I forgot about you, little nigga. Decapitation. <laughs> Door wielding. Decapitation. Like, this man is fucking brutal, dog. Leaves the last guy alive. I'm not a patient man. Tell me, and I'll spare your life. Why did you allow Omar to win that battle? So he saw right through the antics. Man says, I don't know. Pricks his eye. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you again, why'd you set up Almar? We had Almar kill the king's men so Kettle would be responsible. And this is when I knew this nigga Thorgel needed to be locked up immediately. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he said that this was all like their plan, right? Almar was intending to win. Just slaughtered six of the king's men. Kettle's in shock. Almar's about to cry because he thought he was a valiant warrior and that somehow he got a power buff halfway throughout this show. Thorgel sits here, starts cheesing villainous you know once an anime character starts laughing like mom just said we could get mcdonald's after school and this nigga is a monster i don't know where they hired these guards but that shit was off of whatever version of wish.com they have and then seen with canute sitting on top of the wall talking about how they escaped and how he's gonna have to go intervene and start a little commotion over there it is so beautiful man and this is just halfway throughout the season nigga and this is when they switched openings river for me might be anime opening of the year i don't know what other competition we have coming throughout the year and i've had time to digest some more like the house paradise one in the oshinoko but that river opening oh river take me uh. don't get me started with that one don't get me started with that one the next opening paradox isn't far from it it may be crazy enough to break you know what i'm saying the ost in this show so far halfway through the season was great if the season were to hypothetically end there and i'm glad it didn't and i'm glad it went for the whole 24 i would have still said it was a good season people would have probably found it disappointing i would have sat there after watching that final episode 12 and i would have been like you know what that was a decent season i would not say it was better than season one if it ended right there but like that's the type of shit we were working with because they had that whole Arnhide story with this man Garter going on an absolute fucking rampage, pulling up to the farm like fucking King Arthur on his horse. And this is not even fair to Einar. <laughs> it's the fact that she doesn't even remember this man looking like this as well. It is dark and stormy outside and this man is still somehow glistening in the light. I just don't understand. He's as messy as he could be. He probably fucking reeks. And he still has Arnhide sitting here probably drenched. And he's just trying to spit. 
damn shot, you're looking more beautiful than before. I would love to get under those overalls. You know I'd be. <laughs> you know and this man, Snake, and his crew, I, I know times are different, but this man did not give a fuck. He said, I am capturing this nigga and damn near decapitates his horse. And that's how you know he was really committed to this task because horses go for a lot. So that was probably the equivalent to like a 2023 Accord. I saw, I saw a couple comments online that people didn't really like this like side Arnhide story, but I think it really helps with like not only Thorfinn's, but Einer's development as well, and even Snake's. Because this man Garter starts charging up his shit, and like Garter's putting pressure on him and applying it, but Snake's still having normal dialogue while dodging his attack. Like, it's just the fact that like this nigga is, you could clearly see how many levels he is above Garter. Now granted, Garter's obviously injured, disoriented, but he it doesn't seem like he's really fighting with any poison, any skill. He's more so just brute strength. And Snake's got the strength too, clearly, but you could like, just look, he's got the fucking footwork. He's probably put hours into like dance class to be moving as swiftly as he is like we see we see the nigga just picking garter apart and then eventually capturing him alive and now obviously arnhide is informed like of the circumstances and that he's been captured and they're gonna do whatever torture him question him i don't even remember i mean i knew she i knew her horny ass <laughs> I knew she was gonna, like you can't tell me being in her position you see your husband come back after a fucking 10 year road trip wherever the fuck he went i don't know how long it's been i forgot but it's like you see your husband, who is probably pushing 160 max, pull up on a fucking stallion, probably clocking in at like 210, just pure muscle. If he gets captured, I'm, I'm figuring that shit out. I'll be Tondro and I'm going to sniff out his pheromones and then, <laughs> and then I'll have to find him some way. And now granted, I think in Arnheim's situation, the safer route would be Einer. Einer could make himself look exactly like Garter if that's what she wants. And I know that's not her whole motive, but I mean, she's been going crazy with Kettle for so long. I mean, that could only be so fun. You know, <laughs> that could only be such a fun time. So, I mean, I <laughs> she's in dire need of some willy. See, and this is where she messed up, though. She really shouldn't have set this maniac free because he's sitting here. He's acting all docile, like he's not going to pound. She infiltrates and she clearly unties him. One of the security guards pull up and this nigga pulled a Gabby Maru. <laughs> I don't know what she was expecting. This nigga is like a wildebeest now. This dude ravaged them. Like, this was not like a normal beatdown. He was treating these people like Legos. But he's doing this shit on like 15 HP, which is the crazy part. Get a full healed Garner, and he's taking over this fucking farm. Because that was all the energy he even had to get away either. Because now he's out of commission, and they have to take care of the dude right under Snake's nose in the old headmaster's house, like in a fucking filing cabinet or something. I don't know where they had him. And we see them formulate this plan where Einer pretends to be Garner and then run off in the distance. Snake's men go after him. And then Thorfinn and Arnheide are trying to stow him away on the back of a horse wagon thing but then see and this was another <laughs> this was another this is a one of those top three moments i would say this is like in the top five category snake pulls up because he knows that there's some monkey business going on and thorfinn's the last line of defense and just see this nigga put up his set as if he has some invisible daggers in his hand that shit got me so excited and it, it, like in the choreography behind this shit that like it could just again it's just build up because you didn't expect thorfinn to go fighting niggas after like this whole mountain of development that he just went over. You know, you don't expect that. For him to put this shit up and just give Snake that fucking work. And he's, and Bo it's like a very equal battle. Thorfinn's doing a double kick combo and then doing like a flip. He's so elegant and graceful with it. I just don't get it. Like the nigga did us flash stepped. He vanished. And again, this choreography of Snake's falling backwards. Thorfinn's about to bash his head to the ground. And then Snake gets a nice little sword slash upwards, gets his cheek, and then hits the back handspring as he's falling back. There was not really any gore. This was just pure choreography. Mappa did a great job. Like this is really all the fighting we needed. I'm sorry. If you're one of those people who watched this show for the action, I understand. First season was filled with it. If you legitimately sat through every single episode of this season up to this point and so on, and you come out of this season saying it is a bad season because of that action aspect, everyone's opinion is valid except this one. <laughs> but no, for real. This season, just as a body of work, is objectively good. If you look at the characters and you just look at like the effort put behind some of these scenes and just the emotional weight of some of these scenes and the reintroduction of characters such as Askeladd paying homage to season one, but how much of an effect it had on Thorfinn and just looking at Thorfinn and Einar's development up until this point, seeing how Thorfinn wasn't even supposed to be fighting at all, but he has his back against the wall right now compared to what he had to do. And you're still p seeing him put in this work when he's rusty as hell. Now, granted, he's probably in the best shape of his life, but it's like in terms of fighting, he hasn't really been polishing up on his skills. You know what I mean? You could say that this is the worst season of Vinland. You could say that the season compared to last is bad. If just taking it for what it is, 
I just don't think anyone in their right mind can watch it and say it's like trash. Like I just, I, I can't comprehend it. And again, it's all my opinion. I am being biased and dick riding the hell out of this show just because I've enjoyed it so much. But it's just, again, I don't, I don't know, man. Like he has the man sweating. I don't think we've seen Snake sweat once in this 17 episodes at all. So we really was giving him a run for his money. They even got Gramps waking up out of bed like he's a crawler on five, pleading to Snake, just asking him to chill. And then we see Snake like, you know, he slaughtered like five of my men, right? Why would I keep him alive? He is completely in the right, but both sides like, you understand what they're fighting for. And he stabs Garter in the chest, but he really doesn't even stab him that deep. And then this nigga resurrects like the Undertaker and just puts him in a sleeper. I don't know what type of shit this man has been on because if we're looking at these flashbacks seeing the type of dainty man he used to be compared to now he went through about three training arcs and it may have been the motivation to find his wife and kid again his kid that is now deceased that he still is under the assumption that's alive which even makes this whole situation worse and he i don't even think he ever knows that until he actually dies and sees the nigga at their house quote unquote in the afterlife and he's like oh okay like cool all this show is at this point is just conflicting opinions in wrong place wrong time because no one here is necessarily bad except this nigga kettle and I really was a fan of him this first half of the season, but his whole family is damn near corrupt. And we see Thorgil trying to rally up the troops for this war, while simultaneously Kettle has lost his goddamn mind. This is what I'm talking about. Man brings the girthiest stick he could find, and he just starts beating her down. Like, it was it was a little brutal. Obviously, because that was like his sweetie, his cupcake, sugar plum, whatever you want to call it. He really looked at her as like the only person that would listen to what he has to say. So obviously, finding out that she had a husband and tried to escape the farm with him and all that set this nigga off the rails. She's pleading for her life like, oh, I'm pregnant with your child. He was going so crazy, Snake had to step in. And Leaf was offering money too. He said he would buy Einar, Thorfinn, and Arnheide, and then that nigga was like, no, she's mine, I'm a keeper. I don't even want to know what type of shit he would have done once Thorfinn and everyone gathered up, left the farm. And then we cut to him, Einar, and Thorfinn just walking in on Arnheide, bruised up like an avocado. Kettle, he's been capping his whole life about his iron fist thing. If his fists were so iron, I'm sure he would have used those to beat down Arnheide rather than a wooden stick. But he doesn't even care anymore because Canute pulled up and this nigga was war ready. Without a second thought, sends in his troops and they are getting fucking demolished. Like, it, <laughs> they didn't stand one chance. But that they see, this is why this nigga Thorgil is on another level. He can't, because he's pulling the biggest flank since the ones I was pulling back in Black Ops 2. He's going around the whole entire battle into the ocean, and he has to even leave Omar in the dust because this nigga can't even stand it anymore. But the fact is, he's swimming with a sword on his back, and these are heavy fucking weapons. No armor, no nothing. Nigga flanks the king, and Canute had his little training arc, so like he was able to react somewhat. Thorgil's slash was so fucking strong, it damn near shattered the nigga's blade in half. And it's like, his form with this shit? He hit Canute's right and left guard with a double decapitation? He's looking very medicine. He's lucky that Thorgil let his guard down for a second, and then start getting choked out by one of his boys, but then he f***s his eyeball, and just hooks him from the inside, and throws him off of him, like it's so gruesome. And getting to these last four episodes, this is really where like, I would say light skin Thorfinn kind of came into his own and he really established he wants the title. We see Ornheide dying in her little carriage, giving her little before death speech and Einar is just sitting here pleading, talking about how he loves her and that he needs her. And then she's like, I had fun with y'all boys, but I got to get out of here. Seeing this scene right now with Thorfinn made me want him to cradle my head and rock me to sleep or something like that. He literally is taken straight from his dad's book as he's rocking Arnheide to her death right now, talking about how there's a land beyond the reach of slave traders and the flames of war, and I promised you'd be able to live there without suffering. Arnheide, let's go there together. Let's build a peaceful nation in Vinland. I mean, look at this fucking face. He's got Einar tearing up. That was the most beautiful shit I have ever heard in my fucking life. Glory to God. <laughs> Leaf is like, I do not know this nigga. This is not Thorfinn. Where is my... <laughs> Snake pulls up with the master and Einar is on go mode. He's just ready. He's ready to flatten that man out. Einar, relax, bitch. Like, there's no reason to do this. Just chill. Chill, I'll handle it. <laughs> See, this is what I was saying. Einar could have been guarded. Look at this thing. <laughs> He's the same. Eyes to the back of the head, berserk mode. Einar, you're not going to just sit there and bitch me like that. You're going to stop right fucking now. Or else I'm going to get to swing and you got one more fucking chance of night. <laughs> you know what? I swear I saw it in a fucking dream. 
I know you can't be a home wrecker. That's just not how me and you operate, and you know this. After this whole poetry slam, Leaf's got the boat set up, and then we see this nigga saying, I'm actually gonna go talk to the king a bit. So just wait up for me. This, the, ah! Damn! This, no, he's best MC. Thorfinn might be the best, at least new gen. Not even. He might be the best MC of all time doing shit like this, because this nigga doesn't even have the intention to fight. The fact that Thorfinn is beating dudes, I still can't get over it. That Thorfinn has got a winning record right now, beating dudes with his words, and him getting attacked physically, and he still winning fights, pulling up to this group of dudes, talking about how he used to be a right hand for Canute. They don't believe him. They're making fun of his stench. And then we see him make this deal to get hit a hundred fucking times, and he doesn't even fight back. And he's 30 hits in. Einar just distracts him real quick, so he actually gets a shot off and gets hit in the face. And this nigga, like, why? gets knocked out cold for a second they're like Thorfinn you gotta stop this gets up spits out his teeth points at the nigga he didn't even have to go this far he really did it he said hey why the fuck are you just standing in their middle part he's talking about his barber now dog <laughs> it's just, it's, that's how you know it's getting serious are you punching me or kissing me I can't tell because this shit does not hurt one fucking bit. You've got 68 more. Get that shit over with. I'm trying to get going. I'm a busy man. I got people waiting for me. I've got places to be. Like, he's just... Oh! Like, in recent time, I don't think I've gotten so hyped at, like, dialogue, man. And then we pinch these niggas in the early evening. The sun's setting. We got Droller eventually getting all his punches off, drops to his knees, and then he starts dick riding Thorfinn. I would have been in Droll's position 20 punches in. I would have already said, Thorfinn, son of Thor, you are a worthy warrior. I'm sorry I doubted you. And I'm going to go cut my shit right now. Not one person is objecting to that at all. And everyone is just sitting there as he's the last one standing fucking tall. His face is puffy as shit, and I've seen the manga panel. They did do him dirty a little bit. Why didn't you hit him back? What type of question is that? Why would I hit him back when I'm trying to be the one negotiating for peace? We all come from different walks of life. We have no real reason to hit each other. It's really just Canute and Kettle that are the ones that have differences. If anything, they should go settle this shit one on one. Just seeing this nigga spit fucking game and I've taken a class of philosophy. I should have been learning about this nigga. Not Socrates, not Aristotle, not none of them. I should have been learning about this nigga. We just need to stop shedding blood. You guys are not my enemies. I don't have any enemies. It's like the weight. Him saying that may, might be the best moment of the year. And it's like with this whole Canute interaction, you really don't know what to expect because you have Canute who's been operating like a fucking madman, lunatic, taking out his whole family lineage. But then we have Thorfinn here apologizing for the scar on his face. It's such a powerful scene because they literally swapped lives. Canute really pleaded his case somewhat and he was like, look at us. Are we really the people that deserve to live in peace? So I'm gonna make a world for us. And as we see Einar get invisibly upset, Thorfinn's in his mind, he's like, this nigga is kind of spitting. I'm not even gonna lie, I understand it. And I never even thought about it like that. It really goes to show that people just need to talk sometimes because Canute is like kind of set on this. Thorfinn's thinking to himself like, damn, he's kind of like, he's not necessarily right, but I understand. And Einar's like, your brother killed this person, this person, this person related to me. And they did all of this. And you expect me to not hate you, Canute. Cold as hell, cold as ice. Hate me if you must. That's not gonna change the fact that I'm still gonna do what I'm gonna do. He surrounds them. Did you come here to admonish me? Thorfinn straight up says to this nigga, as he's being surrounded, I wasted my time. Goodbye, your majesty. I have no right to criticize your ideas and how you feel. I don't necessarily agree with it. I understand where you're coming from, but the only option left for me is to run. And this man Thorfinn is so outrageous, he had Canute start laughing diabolically. I thought he was about to pull the most villainous shit of 2023 with the way he started laughing. Like it almost sounded evil. I didn't even think it was a legitimate laugh. With his track record this whole season, I'm not thinking he's about to retreat. But Thorfinn was spitting so much game to this nigga in Golden Hour, he damn near made Canute switch teams. He's looking at Thorfinn internally, he's like, what an exceptional warrior. You're a beautiful man. Like, <laughs> that's, that's the type of shit he's speaking right now. No other character is doing it like this. And then Thorfinn basically comes to an agreement with the dude that he'll create a place that's out of the king's reach. So then they both can somewhat live peacefully. And it's like, it's a good compromise. I don't know if they're going to have to fight in the future. I don't know how that's going to work. But you can see that they now have a real deal, like mutual respect for each other. Thorfinn single-handedly spoke to a king one-on-one, -on -one, looked him in his face, and made the nigga turn around, make his fleet go from like thousands of ships to a fucking 16, willingly. And the thing is, it wasn't even finished either. It wasn't, it wasn't finished because they go to Arnheim's grave. And this is the episode I cried tears, real tears. I'm gonna put that shit on the screen right now. 
because this was the most beautiful fucking speech and the beauty. Oh my gosh. Episode 23 might be my anime episode of the year so far. It's like the perfect music. We're seeing Einar tense up. The wind's blowing. The birds are flocking. They're both looking up into the sky. Thorfinn's speaking to the gods, talking about what they're going to do and how they're going to accomplish this together. And when he put his hand out for Einar, picked him up, looked him in his eyes and said, brother, come with me. That's when I lost my fucking, I started bawling my eyes out. Actually, you will build a peaceful land in Vinland and beyond the sea, let's create a country without slavery or war. They did that little handshake. They declared themselves genuine brothers. And then the show showing like everyone around the farm and them leaving on the boat and then Snake giving them his real name as they're sailing away. And I thought he was genuinely going to go with them, but I understand why he stayed. Maybe he'll pop up later on in the show. I hope so, because they were a really good trio, I think. What was really getting me emotional, it shows the imprint that they've left on this farm and how corrupt it kind of was before and how you had all these hooligans messing around, using the slaves, doing whatever, like the fox dude. And now he's out here plowing the wheat and doing all that. And it really just shows the hard work to like, maintain something and it shows the hard work it takes to like i don't know it just shows so many life themes and this was sort of like a culmination of all of it and like when thorfinn got home it was funny because his sister didn't even recognize him and she's a fucking tank herself throwing him around like he's a rag doll when he eventually meets his mother back in iceland it is like such a it's such a touching scene too because she's just telling him that he looks just like his dad and he's just get he's starting to get along with everyone and he gets bashed into the wall by his sister like it's, it's it's a funny nice wholesome episode and he tells his whole family that he's caught in thousands of bodies and his plans and his mom's like do it go chase your dreams it's like that can also be symbolic to like real life too like your parents supporting you even though he's been gone for fucking years and then he picks up his dad's sword i don't know if he's actually wielding this shit but then we see him talking on the rock with the northern lights and then he's talking to his younger self where do people who want to run away from here go and then his dad's spirit touches his shoulder and is like you already know the answer to that don't you and that shit was like goosebumps nigga i was like fuck and we see this nigga walk out of that house now granted i love the facial hair and the long hair but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. The way he was coming out here looking determined like this with the, oh, oh my gosh, this is a sexy ass nigga. And he looks like he means business. That's really it. The animation this season, I mean, sometimes it was a little funky with the boats and I understand Mappa, but I mean, other than that, the animation this season was beautiful. The soundtrack had me wanting to go outside and just run and keep running. The characters that were introduced were all great too. There was not really a character I didn't like and I felt like they all were focused on at the right points in time and that they all contributed to the overall plot i didn't think i would appreciate and enjoy this season as much as i ended up enjoying it i think that this season was better than season one the messages being sent were better and i just think there was so much more depth i came out of this season feeling like i took something in for myself and that i learned something I've never got as emotional either like when I was crying for episode 23, there were tears of joy. I was watching this and I was just happy for Thorfinn. And I was happy for Einar. Even though they lost Arnheid in the process, I was happy for both of them. And I was happy for the farm. I was happy for everyone except for Kettle. And I was happy to see Canute develop into what he did and just take all of his soldiers out of there. As I said, my only issue was I didn't even get to see that Leaf Thorfinn reunion, but it's not even that big of a deal. And I don't know if I've thrown a 10 ever. I don't, I really don't. I may have for Cyberpunk, but I think for Vinland Saga season two, genuinely, in my heart of hearts, that it was a 10 out of 10. I don't think there was one thing wrong with it. And I saw people that were like, this shit's ass, five out of 10. I asked, I was talking to someone last night because they were a big fan of Vinland season one. And then they were like talking to me about how when season two comes out, like I gotta be on it. I finished it. I was like, yo, Vinland Saga season two, that shit was a 10 out of 10. This dude told me it was a five out of 10. People wanted action and they just wanted gore and Thorfinn sticking daggers in people's necks. And, and you still even got some of that at the end, not with Thorfinn specifically, but you got that with some of these Vikings, just, just pure violence. But it's like, I didn't have anything I wanted going into the season. I just wanted it to be good. And I came out of this and I was like, wow, this is great. I don't know. It was beautiful. This was a beautiful season and I'm glad I was able to watch it. But with that being said, if you stay to the end of the video, I appreciate it. That's it. And on to the next one.